That was Lord Jesus Think on Me. Uh, before that, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Numbers 14 and 15 in Praise to the Lord from the uh, St. Paul's Cathedral Choir with English Brass Ensemble with Christopher Darnley, organist, and John Scott as director. This is put out by the Musical Heritage Society in 1999, but it's there was uh, produced by Hyperion Records in 18, eight, uh, 1989. and uh, put out again in 2002 by the Musical Heritage Society of Oakhurst, New Jersey, Hyperion Records and of London. This Mass is being celebrated for Michael Curran. Eternal rest grant to Michael, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And this is today a uh, the <clears throat> a vote of mass for Saint Joseph, Saint Joseph, for uh, an intention, and especially for. The intention of for the universal church, for uh, harmony there, fidelity of, among the hierarchs especially, and uh, the people, and for a great uh, unity, unity there of, in, in, of the of Christians, and especially in uh, we here at the Catholic Church to live our vocation as the Catholic Church of being uh, one holy Catholic and apostolic. And also for a, a peaceful death, St. Joseph is the patron of peaceful deaths because in tradition, with the small t, uh, he died, he, he's mentioned last, only a few times, he doesn't have a speaking part in the Gospels. Uh, but he's mentioned uh, in Luke, and then, uh, and his name is listed uh, in the listing of the uh, the forebearers of Christ, even though he is not the uh, biological father of Jesus. Jesus is miraculously conceived virginally in the womb of Mary, and the last time he's mentioned is the finding of the temple when Jesus is 12, and he's not mentioned again. So the assumption is that he died before Jesus begins his public ministry. And so, and, and with Mary, with Mary and Jesus there at his deathbed, there, so that uh, a prepared death a happy death, or as they say in the litany, peaceful, unashamed, painless, peaceful, unashamed, and with a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. That, like St. Joseph, we can stand before the Lord, and the Lord can say to us, good and faithful servant, receive the, the reward that was prepared for you. He's also a patron saint of workers and 
we were also praying at this mess, and especially for the unemployed, for those, for the unemployed, that they may get employment and pray for the uh, financial situations of so many people. Yeah, so those are the intentions for this, as well as being celebrated for uh, Michael Curran. Eternal rest grant to him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Magnificat, we have the for today, for Thursday, the the the, the readings begin on page two eighty five, except for the Old Testament reading. Which, begin, which can be found, which is from Deuteronomy 7, 9, which can be found in the Magnificat on page uh, 290, page 290, and uh, the uh, Book of Revelation 5, 1 through 10, can be found on 285. Two eighty-five, as can be found the entrance antiphon and the meditation for the Thursday of the thirty-third week in ordinary time. Jesus weeps because the city of Jerusalem does not know what makes for peace, and what is that? The visitation in the flesh of the Lamb of God, who with his blood purchases for God those from every tribe and tongue, people and nation. His presence will make us a kingdom and a priest for our God. The entrance antiphon, which can also be found in the OCP Missalette, or any other Missalette you have in the back, uh, they have, uh, most Missalettes have the, the people's parts of the propers of the Mass, the things that change every day, and the entrance antiphon can be found on page 186. But let's do the St. Joseph one first. Behold a faithful and prudent steward whom the Lord set over his household. The Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you. And I will lead back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the font of mercy. Have mercy on us, for we have sinned against you. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh Lord Jesus, you are eager to forgive. Show us, O oh Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. You came to call sinners to repentance and to new life. You give us the grace of repentance and renewal. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your inexpressible providence were pleased to choose St. Joseph as spouse of the Most Holy Mother of your Son, grant, we pray, that we who revere him as our protector on earth may be worthy of his heavenly intercession through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Understand then that the Lord your God is God indeed, the faithful God, who keeps his merciful covenant down to the thousandth generation towards those who love him and keep his commandments. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 149. Is from 149. And the refrain is from Revelation 5.10. The Lamb was ma has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Let them praise his name in festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people. He adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be on their throats. This is the glory for all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. It had writing on both sides and was sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a mighty angel who proclaimed in a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to examine it. I shed many tears because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to examine it. One of the elders said to me, do not weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed, enabling him to open the scroll with its seven seals. Then I saw standing in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and the elders a lamb that seemed to have been slain. He had seven horns and seven eyes. These are the seven spirits of God sent out into the whole world. 
came and received the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. That when he took it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each of the elders held a harp and gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the holy ones. They sang a new hymn. Worthy are you to receive the scroll and break open its seals. For you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God those from every tribe and tongue, people and nation. You made them a kingdom and priests for our God, and they shall reign on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, ah, alleluia, 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 ah, alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. from the 19th chapter, the 41st through the 44th verses. As Jesus drew near Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If this day you only knew what makes for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. For the days are coming upon you when your enemies will raise a palisade against you. They will encircle you and hem you in, on all sides. They will smash you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another within you because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Josephus Flavius, the Jewish writer at the, who wrote about the destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70 in his Jewish wars. Uh, he was uh, an officer in the rebel army, but he defected and went over to the other side. He was captured and I think perhaps even enslaved because he ends up with the name Flavius. Uh, after the Flavian family, and so uh, the imperial family. And he, well, let's just pray for that, those fire engines going by, for the people that they're going to. And so uh, he wrote that about and the terrible uh, suffering and destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70, and the destruction of the Temple of Herod, that magnificent building, the center of Jewish worship. And so after that, Jewish worship would change its focus. It wouldn't be a, a animal sacrificial system it would become that the synagogue oriented eventually and uh, the worship would be the worship of praise the uh, wor a worship of prayer and indeed the worship of study which would be of god studying god's word the written word and since it was the pharisee school that really survived 
and from which came Orthodox Judaism and from Orthodox Judaism all the schools of Judaism that are in denominations of Judaism that exist today. <coughs> the oral Torah, the mosaic oral tradition, which out of which the scriptures came and and which we Christians believe is fulfilled by the apostolic tradition, the tradition of Jesus, the full gospel, uh, which was oral before it was written, and that oral context for it is still there if you we want to interpret scripture rightly. And only the church, the Catholic church, we Catholics believe, has the authority to interpret scripture authoritatively and definitively. Well, anyway, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem for seeing this as a prophet, but even people who could read the signs of the times would see the growing uh, rebellion movement against Rome, the growing harshness of Rome, because one of the things that really triggered this was the uh, intent of, of, of putting a, a statue of the God Emperor in, in the temple. Uh, uh, so that would be, uh, and then they stopped praying for the Emperor uh, and the, the sacrifices. And he said that they would put up, uh, they would uh, lay siege to the city, they'd steal it off, and uh, people would starve in it. There would be all this, uh, uh, all these problems. And even people turning, the uh, rebels turning on each other at the time, and there would be great death and slavery from that, and, and the destruction of the temple. Uh, uh, not to be rebuilt. It hasn't been rebuilt yet. The Dome of the Rock is there now. Uh, so, but, but Jesus, who points to himself as a temple, said, points beyond that the, we don't need that. We do need sacred places. We do need temples. We do need churches. We do need uh, physical objects to remind us of the presence of God. We need uh, pictures and statues and things like that. And some people say, oh, I don't really need that. Well, it's not an absolute, they're not an absolute necessity. A church building isn't an absolute necessity, but a great aid in practicing the presence of God. They are. And so this was not just a prophecy of the a near future Jesus was giving, but a prophecy also of the end of the world and the prophecy of our own and our own death when we will leave this world. We probably, the world, the time that you don't know the day or the hour when the world is going to end, or how fully, you know, do you have all these symbolic descriptions of the uh, of end of the world, but uh, we don't know when that's going to be. Will it be tomorrow, today, a uh, hundred years from now, 10,000 years from now, millions of years from now, billions of years from now? when the uh, sun expands or, or uh, when uh, our galaxy and another galaxy collide or whatever. But we do know our deaths will be coming. And at this time, at the end of the liturgical year, uh, we meditate on that. And also in Advent, the first half of Advent, when we meditate on the second coming. The, liturgically, we meditate on the second coming before we meditate on the first coming, because the second half of Advent 
is on the first coming of Jesus. You know, his, uh, Mary's pregnancy his, and his birth, uh, preparing for his birth. And of course, we know Christmas and Christmas time is meditation on his birth and on the infancy of Christ. And so, but Jesus says something that the whole world needs to know. If this day, and, and applying not to some future thing, but to this very moment, as the Alleluia verse also tells us, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Jesus, but Jesus says, if this day you only, if only you knew this day what makes for peace. And the world really needs Jesus for peace. There was this slogan, uh, no Jesus, no peace. And also another one, play on the word no. Uh, uh, N-O, Jesus, N-O, peace. K-N-O-W, Jesus, K-N-O-W, peace. And what does it mean to know Jesus? It's not just knowing facts about Jesus. It is not ju even just knowing the tenets of the faith. It's living them. It's putting them in our will. It's putting them into effect in our lives. It's enshrining God, the Holy Trinity, in our heart. Of course, not just the uh, physical blood pump, but that center of your life to enshrine the Lord there and to offer in this life a relationship of deep prayer to grow in that. The image of in the book of Revelation of the elders, the presbyters, there with harps and gold bowls, the censers, filled with incense. And we're told, which are the prayers of the holy ones. And they sang a new hymn. So this is, they're always singing these new hymns. There's, there's a, a lot of uh, singing refrains and repeated things uh, in heaven in the imagery in the book of Revelation. Also a lot of incense there and they uh, all sorts of things but here there is this this scroll the scroll of prophecy here of the fulfillment the scroll also which some people see as the the uh, book of judgment the book of the deeds of all the people uh, at that but uh, no one in all creation is worthy to open it up. It says no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth. And that means everyone, uh, the, uh, anyone in cre any created being. Is it? The only one to open it is God. And in particular, God, the eternal word, who's become fully human, the Messiah. And the, the imagery of the Messiah that's used from the uh, book of Genesis there, the lion of the tribe of Judah, but also the root of David, not just the uh, a branch of David or, or a twig come out from David or the fruit of David, but the root of David, who is long before David, indeed, who is uh, the source, who is God himself, who is eternal and is the creator of all things, who is the, uh, the one who brings us all into being. And so, and, and the lamb that's there is a little strange, this lamb, who's been slain but lives. And of course he's with the four living creatures who are also very strange. And this lamb is strange because he has seven horns and seven eyes. So I guess this seven eyes, seven, the number of, of fullness, the seven eyes, the omniscience, undeniable, 
the omniscience of God, the omniscience of the Lamb. The Lamb is omniscient because he is God. He is in his divine nature, God equal with the Father and the Holy Spirit, and in his humanity, uh, one of us. Yet now that his, his human body and, and nature are resurrected, uh, transformed and brought to the fullness that is our destiny if we persevere in grace in this life. So, and it, we're told, they have the seven spirits of God sent out into the whole world, which could be the Holy Spirit, and some see this as the uh, seven archangels, uh, seven archangels that are named. There are only three named in the Bible, Michael, Gabriel. Gabriel is the big messenger. He does a lot of a lot of stuff, uh, back and forth to Daniel, and then to Zechariah, and to Mary, and all of this. So he's the, uh, the telegraph deliverer of heaven. So those that some see that as the meaning that, uh, but the or the seven spirits, the guardian angels of the cities uh, that the letters were addressed to, the cities of Asia Minor. So it's been sent out into the whole world. So the Holy Spirit, if we're using that uh, level of interpretation there, is out to the whole world. And we are sent out to the whole world as the church. But as individuals, we're sent out we, you may be called, like St. Francis Xavier, or the uh, or very missionaries out to the edge of the world, but probably not. But you are called to those, the, those people the Lord puts in your life, your family, perhaps other people, your friends, other people, co-workers, other people, neighbors, the people that are in your life. And, and there are some people you could reach that probably nobody else could, a, a close friend. And the opportunity will come. So we have to ask for that discernment, that awareness of knowing, of taking that opportunity and what to say. So that Jesus said, you shouldn't worry about what to say, that it will be given to you. Because the most important thing to say is the words of our actions how we treat other people, how we're living the tenets of the faith, how we're living and treating other people the way we want to be treated, and loving God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves, and turning from mortal sin and cultivating the virtues and the power of the Holy Spirit through grace. For it is by grace alone we're saved through faith, but a faith that works through love, as St. Paul, the apostle of faith, underlines, the apostle of grace underlines that uh, faith uh, works through love. And also in 1 Corinthians 13, if you have all sorts of faith, but you don't have love, you have nothing, indeed are nothing in that. So may we fall down before the Lamb, before Jesus, God incarnate, who became the sacrifice for us. In the temple, the lambs were a favored a sacrifice, especially for uh, ordinary people uh, who could afford that. If you couldn't afford a, a lamb, you were to give uh, pigeons, a, a turtles, a doves. And, uh, if you could afford more, an ox uh, for that. But uh, the lamb was the thing. And the lamb is the Passover sacrifice whose blood over the doorpost kept the angel of death away from the Israelites during the plagues in Egypt. But Jesus, as the blood that saves, is, is the full sacrifice, that image of the sacrifice, that prefiguration of all the animal sacrifice that's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. 
So let us, at least spiritually, some of us, if we get down in prostration, uh, we may not be getting up, but to uh, spiritually fall down in adoration of God incarnate, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, and ask for him to be that peace of our lives, P-E-A, C-E. Let us now turn to the Lord in prayer, not only for our needs, but for the needs of the whole world and church, as we join with the whole body of Christ, all those who are in God's grace here on earth, uh, the ver all, at all the ends of the earth, and those in heaven, and those on the porch of heaven, for whom we pray in a special way during this month of November, the souls of purgatory. As we turn to the Father through the, in the Spirit, through our one mediator and redeemer, Jesus Christ, true God and true man. For Francis, our Pope, for Sean, our Archbishop, for James Hickey, our pastor, for Damien, my abbot, for all bishops, priests, deacons, monastics and religious, for all who minister in any way in the body of Christ, and all who serve God's grace, for all the needs of the church, for her unity and mission, and for the whole people of God, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, as we join in prayer partnership with the whole body of Christ, especially with uh, Mary and Joseph, the silent, as we pray for uh, a prepared death for ourselves, that we may truly be abounding in grace at the time that we pass from this mortal life to uh, the life beyond and for all those dying today especially those dying right now for the welfare of the church everywhere and for workers and especially for the unemployed that they may receive employment for all those in financial difficulties at this time, and uh, in the midst of all the stress of the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation and all nations and peoples, for our civil authorities and for all the civil authorities throughout the world, for all in positions of influence, especially the media, that they may promote peace, justice, freedom, equality, growth in virtue, and the defense and advancement of all human life from the moment of conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our military and all who are in situations of danger, our police, our firefighters, EMTs during this pandemic, uh, physicians, nurses, orderlies, healthcare workers, for all those who suffer from violence of war and oppression, for all those in moral danger throughout the world, especially for young people influenced 
uh, uh, tempted by the pornography industry, by uh, moral relativists, for um, uh, the uh, hedonists and uh, the uh, material, greedy materialists. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, for the repentance of sinners beginning with ourselves, for growth in grace, for the return of those who have left the church, for the return of those who have strayed morally, for those who have turned away from Christ and from God. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed by any burden, for all the sick and suffering, especially those suffering during this pandemic for, and this flu season, for those with chronic, uh, serious uh, illnesses, especially those with uh, illnesses that seem to be fatal, for those uh, sick in body, mind, or spirit, for all those suffering in body, mind, and spirit in any way, for all people in their struggles of life, for the persecuted, especially our fellow persecuted Christians throughout the, throughout the world, for each person in his struggle of life, his or her struggle of life, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our local communities, our parishes, dioceses, our workplaces, our neighborhoods, our towns and country places and cities. For all our families, friends and enemies, our co-workers and neighbors and associates. For the needs of all and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our deceased, especially for Michael Curran, for those deceased, we commemorate, especially during this month of November. For our deceased family, friends, enemies, co-workers, neighbors, and associates. For those who have died today and or, or will die today. For all who have died in terror, fear, uh, grief, for those who have died through violence, through war, murder, or suicide, for those who have died in the state of grace but unprepared, for those who have died uh, unreconciled, with uh, people here on earth, for those souls of purgatory most in need of our prayers, and for all the de our deceased uh, that we know of, uh, uh, and all the deceased named Joseph, uh, in a special way, Joseph Corrieri, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God incarnate, Saint Joseph, the patron of the Universal Church, patron of, the, of workers and the unemployed, a patron of a peaceful and prepared death, St. Patrick, patron of the Archdiocese of Boston, a Batalf, patron of the Boston area, the prophet Obadiah, the martyrs Exuperius, Seferinus, and Felician, Pontian and Hippolytus, the, uh, uh, the Pope and uh, repentant anti-Pope, 
Maximus of Rome, martyr, Barlam of Caesarea, martyr, Asas and companions, martyrs, Nerses the Great of Armenia, bishop and martyr, Crispin of Echoha, bishop and martyr, Faustus of Alexandria, martyr, Athanasius II, Pope, Erwin Berger of Thanet of London, a widow and Benedictine nun, Madonna of Galloway of Scotland, nun, Tuto of Otto, Otto Boyron, abbot, James of Sasso, confessor, Otto of Tordino, abbot, Mechtild of Hackerborn, nun, the martyrs of Annam of Vietnam from 1754 to 1841, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ, our God, our friend, our Messiah, our Savior, our Redeemer, our great advocate and hope to you, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And let us add our own deepest needs and intentions. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, you have spoken into the chaos <coughs> of sin, the one all-powerful word of salvation, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Teach us to put our faith in the constancy of your word and trust in the saving blood of the Lamb, who sees all but looks with the eyes of mercy. Help us not to trust in our own way, but in Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. servant. Come share your master's joy. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this world and wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself to share in our humanity.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me with iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we prepare to offer the sacrifice of praise, O Holy Father, we humbly ask to be sustained in our service by the prayers of St. Joseph, whom you call to watch like a father on earth over our your, your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and in honoring St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you, for this just man was given by you as the spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, the dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic Prayer 2. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Michael Curran, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have to ask for this even. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphons. To be near God is my happiness, to place my hope in the God the Lord. Amen, I say to you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you will receive, and it will be given to you, says the Lord.
Let us pray our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Restored by these life-giving sacraments, Lord, may we live for you always in justice and holiness, helped by the example and intercession of St. Joseph, who in carrying out your great mysteries served you as a man just and obedient through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Eternal rest grant to Michael, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Lord Jesus, you shed your precious blood for them, so grant them eternal rest. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me, even if he dies, shall live. And whoever lives and has faith in me will never perish. O heavenly King, comforter, spirit of truth, who are everywhere present and filling all things, O treasury of blessings and giver of life, come dwell within us and cleanse our souls, O gracious Lord. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, we adore you here and in all the tabernacles and altars throughout the world, and upon your majestic throne in heaven, that you share equally with the Father and the Holy Spirit, as one God forever and ever. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. O sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. O sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. So let's see who's waving. Waving today. Father Paul Ring Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Sheila Chambers over there in County Cork. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Joseph O'Brien. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Maria Odella Cruz. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Uh, blessings to you, Maria, over there in the Philippines. Oh, well, I guess you're in Montana now. Well, God bless you there. Abishak Roy, Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Priscilla Real, Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Kate O'Neill, Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Patricia Kelleher, Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. So let's continue to pray for each other today and every day. For Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Bye now.